So when it comes to the most premium of premium smartphones, Samsung has been at the top of the heap for years with the Galaxy S Ultra series. And here, the formula really hasn't changed much, but the latest Galaxy S24 Ultra does bring with it some extra useful and impressive features that you gotta know about. Now, AT&T sent me the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra here a few months back, quite a while ago actually, and I've been meaning to drop a video about it. The problem is, I love it so much, I'm never done using it but all good things must come to an end. So I considered my vacation to Italy was the perfect opportunity to put it through its final paces before I send it back. And I'll just say that this could easily be my daily driver and I'd be absolutely content, full stop. Now, I also rocked the OnePlus 12 during my time in Italy. That's actually in a separate video if you wanna see that. But as for the S24 Ultra, let's get into why I'm so smitten with this device. Now, one of the things Samsung's Ultra series is known for is its top tier premium look and feel. And the Galaxy S24 Ultra is no different, but make no mistake, this device is huge. It's about the same height, I'd say, as my Pixel 8 Pro, still maybe a bit wider on the sides. But keeping this phone in your pocket is going to cause at least some issues when you sit down or maybe when you get into your car to drive off. And not only that, this sucker is heavy. No question, the new titanium frame, which is just really nice around the sides, definitely adds some heft. Putting it up against other premium flagships from 2023 and 2024, it's the heaviest of the bunch, 8.22 ounces or 232 grams. And if heavy phones weigh you down, you're gonna wanna think twice about the Galaxy S24 Ultra. But man, is it a beautiful device. The brushed titanium frame on the side just has a nice pop to it. The shiny and reflective framing of the rear cameras, you see kind of glistens in the sunlight. The frosted glass on the back of the device. The seamlessly included S Pen below, I mean, it just hides away right there. This really is one eye-catching device. It looks expensive. Now, Samsung's displays are consistently considered GOAT in the smartphone world, and I absolutely agree. Vibrant colors on the display, high resolutions, energy efficiency. The Galaxy S24 Ultra with its 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED display really delivers impressive sharpness and color reproduction. Not only that, it has the anti-reflective Corning Gorilla Glass screen coating that as you can see, I'm trying to catch the reflection of my studio lights and it's there, but it's not there nearly as much as it is with the Pixel 8 Pro that doesn't have that reflective glare. I mean, you see an immediate difference side by side and this really helps outdoors as well. Um, but also, you know, as you can tell indoors with bright light sources that can really get in the way. I'd love to see this on more devices because it makes a huge difference. Now the OLED reaches a maximum brightness of around 2,600 nits, which makes outdoor usage even better than before especially with that anti-reflective quality. Consider that the S23 Ultra reached a peak brightness of only 1750 nits. That's a huge step up. And Samsung chose to go with, I think the right approach, a flat display this year, bypassing its tradition of curved edges from the Ultra's past. This becomes a big benefit to artists, as I'm gonna talk about in a moment. The S Pen is a huge differentiator and an incredible productivity enhancer. And there are a ton of reasons why. First, its home is literally inside of the phone. So it's always there, integrated, charged, and ready to go. Yes, I said charged because the S Pen isn't just a dumb pointing stick. It's Bluetooth enabled, which gives it some interesting capabilities like acting as a shutter button for your camera or a way to advance slides in your PowerPoint presentations. For quick notes, all you really have to do is remove it from the S Pen housing and it immediately jumps over into note taking mode and uh, via Samsung Notes, in fact. So you just scribble your thought, no device unlock needed. 
Smart Select allows you to simply draw a box around a portion of your screen and then you can do whatever you want with it. Do you want to mark it up? Do you want to share it out? That image snippet can go wherever you like and it happens really fast. Artists have grown to love the S Pen for digital art on the go. Previous versions of the Galaxy S Ultra series featured a curved display on the sides. And uh, that made doing art a bit challenging, at least on the edges. Thankfully, Samsung went with a flat display on the edges here. That actually means the S Pen becomes even more accurate at those edges. Artists are gonna be very happy about this. I am not an artist, obviously. Now, artists will want to know that placing the phone on a table in order to do art is not the best experience in the world. The offset cameras on the side there really make for a wobbly experience. You might be best if this is a way that you wanna use your S24 Ultra for art to get a case that really evens out uh, any of the differences back here so that it can set down on a table flat and you can get to work. Now I've witnessed Samsung's software evolution over the past decade and a half actually. And I have to say that Samsung has really convinced me in recent years that they know finally how to strike a balance between offering an insane feature set while still being restrained for those who don't need all of that extra stuff. One UI 6.1 runs on Android 14 and its full menu of features is much too vast to dive into here on a deep level, but it is getting difficult to separate the UI overlay and the special features Samsung has on board from the artificial intelligence layer that is quickly taking up shop. And really, the AI is the key focus this year for the device. Personally, I think it's pretty interesting. And there's a couple of features that really make me particularly interested. And what we're talking about here is Galaxy AI. That is what Samsung has named its artificial intelligence layer inside of the S24 series and earlier phones that it's now running Galaxy AI into. Of course, most smartphone companies are doing this in 2024, bringing AI onto the device because, well, it's a, it's an important buzzword. You got to be there, but it's also incredibly useful in the mobile sense. So what are some of my favorite Galaxy AI features? Well, first of all, it has to be circle to search. Circle to search is just awesome. You push the pill and it goes into this separate mode, circle the thing. And sure enough, circle to search pulls up a bunch of results related to the Nothing Phone 2, and you can just tap on that and go right into it. It's just another way of using your phone for advanced search capabilities based on what you see, and it can do some really cool things. If you haven't played around with it, it's one of my favorite features in quite a while on Android. Now, something that LLMs are really, really good at is summarization, taking a large body of text text and actually making it understandable, reorganizing, that sort of thing. And Note Assist is a really wonderful implementation of that in the Samsung Notes app. So I've got this note here with a bunch of music production notes in it, very random. And the Galaxy AI button, the kind of cluster of stars, I'll go ahead and hit that. And I can go ahead and I can auto format it, which puts it into headers and bullet points. It's all happening on device right now. It's optimizing and it does that, it sorts it for me. Um, I can also summarize if I want to, come up with a kind of a short summarization of what I've written and a whole lot of other things. And in fact, if you've written some notes in handwriting, you can convert this into text and then do all of this same stuff with it uh, after the fact with note assist. Now, this isn't a very <laughs> comprehensive note, so I'm not going to bother summarizing that. But needless to say, it's pretty neat that you can go from pen to like automatic summarization thanks to the magic of artificial intelligence. Now, on device translation features like Live Translate come in really handy at just the right moment. And being in Italy was certainly one of those moments. You can fire off interpreter, make sure that your languages are set differently. So Italian up top, English down below. And then when I hit the microphone, it's recording my stream of English as I speak. We're not seeing it come up here, but it is keeping it in the bank. And then when I hit stop, it's going to translate that into Italian. E poi quando premo il microfono, registra il mio flusso di inglese mentre parlo. 
Non lo vediamo. Vieni qui, ma lo tiene in banca. E poi quando premo stop, lo tradurrai in italiano. Now, when we were in Italy, you know, a lot of people there speak English anyway. So there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity to use tools like this, but having it in my pocket and having it be so easy to use in a pinch, it was pretty awesome. And then there's the fun stuff, like the image manipulation stuff, which we're so used to seeing AI at this point doing, and it's getting pretty good at it. So first up in the wallpaper settings is a generative AI feature that will create unique desktop imagery for you and change wallpapers. We can go down to create and this generative tab, and this will actually create something new for you uh, with kind of a little interesting approach. You just go through and select the things that make sense to you. Abstract Emerald River with clouds generate. And it fires off the generation of that image. Uh, you're guiding the generation process and you make something a little abstract that no one else has. Now, those are some pretty interesting and unique backdrops. I'm going to go ahead and keep that done and it sets it and boom, I have a new backdrop created just for me in a Mad Libs sort of way. And finally, the generative edit function inside the camera. Now this is an editing toolkit that allows for things like removing unwanted subjects uh, from an image or maybe moving someone to a different part of the image. All the AI features that are coming on mobile seem to include at least a piece of this sort of feature set now. Just tap on the pencil, I can do the little cluster of stars, that is Galaxy AI. And then if I tap on this car, it will try and do a good job of selecting it and I can kind of fill in the selection. And then I can do things like make it larger. <laughs> Hey, there we go. All right, so now I've got a really big car driving down the streets of Milan. There you go. Uh, in any case, I mean, it's it's neat that it can do this and uh, you can fill in the image. If it leaves any holes, it'll go ahead and do some generative fill on the remaining pieces. Probably useful in certain situations, but you could also just fire up Photoshop if you need to, to get a more accurate approach. But it's neat that you can do this in your pocket. Now, if you missed it, I did a much more comprehensive look at some more of my favorite Galaxy AI features in another video on this channel, which you should definitely check out if Galaxy AI is your cup of tea. As for the S24 Ultra and the S24 series in general, Samsung is committed to seven years of operating system and security updates, which is particularly commendable considering the S24 Ultra's processor and memory capacity lend itself for a very long life. Now, thankfully, Samsung will ensure of that with this update promise. Gotta love to see it. All right, so we gotta talk about the cameras because honestly, this was a huge reason that I brought the S24 Ultra to Italy. Uh, I know after years of having the S24 series, in fact, by, prior to the S24 or the S Ultra series was the Galaxy Note series. This was the last of the Galaxy Notes, which was more or less an Ultra phone as well. They always have amazing cameras, amazing video capabilities. I'm just really very impressed by the optics uh, capabilities on these phones. In fact, I can back that up when it comes to the S24 Ultra. Check it out. If you watched my review a number of months ago of the OnePlus Watch 2, you've already seen the handiwork of the 4K capabilities of the S24 Ultra. Nearly 99% of that B-roll in that review was shot with the S24 Ultra's camera in pro video mode. How's that for proof? Pretty awesome, huh? And that's for video. As for still images, I took the phone to Italy with me and my family. And yes, we also brought the OnePlus 12 with us. So I was kind of balancing between these two phones, but often I was opting exactly for the S24 Ultra because primarily it has a better optical zoom capability. The S24 Ultra has 3X and 5X optical zoom. So two options for optical zoom, but it also offers 
10x optical quality zoom, which is essentially it's 5x optical zoom with a crop to 10x. I also threw on raw mode, so it was shooting in full raw, which takes up a lot more space, but gives you a lot more capability after the fact in you know throwing it in Photoshop and getting even more out of it or Lightroom, particularly in the scenes with the dark shadow along with bright detail. And yes, HDR mode is good for this, but shooting in RAW gave me tons of flexibility afterwards in the edit at the cost, like I said, of storage space. Nitography features were incredibly useful as well. There was a fireworks display in Florence, particularly in combination with the zoom lens, which you can do now. You couldn't do that before. Overall, I was never let down by the camera system. I took around a thousand pictures, no joke, just to prove it. I love the camera on the S24 Ultra. All right. It's time to talk about it, the price, and I'm not gonna lie, this is an expensive smartphone. The S24 Ultra starts at $1299, and it doesn't even fold. So no question, this is not the every person phone. And Samsung makes that abundantly clear with the offering of the S24 and the S24 Plus below it. Those devices still give you access to most of the Galaxy AI features that I've talked about here. The same premium processor throughout the family, that's the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, and an IP68 rating for weatherproofing. But on the flip side, you get a bit less in the camera, you get more rounded design and aluminum instead of titanium frame, no S Pen, that's gonna be a big trigger for a lot of you. So yes, it is pricey, it's a pricey device, but it seems to me that Samsung has really proven its worth with the inclusion of that S Pen, a core differentiator from nearly everything else out there. What do you think? Is Samsung offering enough to convince you to pony up for the most ultra device in its portfolio? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. If you have one, let me know how you feel with it. Uh, after a couple of months of owning it, I promise to hit you back if you drop a comment down there. And thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you next time when I do another review coming soon.